Russian anti-ballistic missile system, the A-235, is like a beast protecting Moscow City. It is so effective that no missile, no matter how advanced and sophisticated it is, can escape it. It was so lethal that NATO called it the ABM-4 Gordon because, similar to the Gordon's three sisters, Steno, Uriel, and Medusa, with snakes for hair, it has the power to turn anyone into stone. But unfortunately, just like the Medusa sisters, the Russian Gordon is also going to be subdued because a new beast, more powerful, more sophisticated, and much faster than previous weapons has been born. Meet Lockheed Martin's new sophisticated weapon system, the hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept, Hawk. It is a direct threat to the Russian anti-ballistic missile system because it can pass right through in front of the Russian Gordon anti-missile system, and it won't dare even think of catching it. That's because it isn't a normal missile, but a missile vehicle with ultra-high speed capabilities, like reaching speeds exceeding Mach 5, and it can carry any kind of warhead. And if you don't have an idea of Mach 5 speed, well, Mach 5 is the speed that defines the boundary between supersonic and hypersonic travel, and is equal to 5 times the speed of sound. So a missile traveling at 5 times the speed of sound will be impossible to catch, and the Russian defense system won't even detect it on their radars. This weapon was developed as a joint venture by DARPA, the U.S. Air Force, the Air Force Research Laboratory AFRL, Lockheed Martin, and Aerojet Rocketdyne. Lockheed Martin had already completed the second test flight of the Hawk with great success, achieving speeds that were more than Mach 5. Following its deployment from a Boeing B-52 bomber of the United States Air Force, the Hawk traveled more than 556 kilometers at heights of more than 60,000 feet. Scramjet engines are what make hypersonic flight possible, and Aerojet Rocketdyne is the company that manufactures them. Both of their Hawk flight tests were launched from operational aircraft, and their results matched performance models and forecast, which will help the development of hypersonic weapons in the future that are both inexpensive and speedy. During the two prior test flights, a glider vehicle equipped with a kinetic energy projectile warhead was released from a B-52H Stratofortress bomber. That glider vehicle consisted of a solid rocket motor booster, a glider protective shroud, and the glider itself. After deployment, an automated firing of the booster propelled the glider to speeds greater than the speeds of sound, and then a scramjet engine took over, speeding the glider to more than five times the speed of sound as it reached an altitude of more than 60,000 feet. The data on the scramjet engine used to power the missile, which is one of two variants being investigated by the United States Air Force, reportedly doubled as a result of the test, which was conducted by Lockheed. Raytheon was responsible for the development of the alternative option. Before moving on to the next phase of three test flights, which will include the missile being outfitted with a live warhead, the data will be used to enhance the technology and broaden the performance envelope. The U.S. Navy plans to use its own version of the system on Zumwalt class guided missile destroyers by 2025. A version for a submarine launched hypersonic missile is also expected to be finished by the end of this decade. In the meantime, on September 22nd, the United States Air Force presented Raytheon Technologies, along with its program partner Northrop Grumman, with a contract worth a total of $985 million. This contract is intended to kickstart the development of the hypersonic attack cruise missile as an operational capability as opposed to a prototype. Raytheon will be responsible for the delivery of two of the missile batteries as well as the preparation of the missiles for their intended use on the F-15 fighter planes in 2027. The technology will provide USA Air Commanders with the ability to utilize fighters to keep high-value, time-sensitive targets at risk while preserving bombers for use against other strategic targets. This will offer more tactical flexibility. Kinzhal hypersonic missiles were deployed for the first time in combat by Russia against Ukraine in the spring. This event saw the introduction of new hypersonic weaponry into military conflict. Therefore, the United States felt the necessity to develop this weapon, particularly at a time when there is an active conflict taking place in Europe. As a direct response, the Department of Defense DoD, of the United States has put a lot of money into developing hypersonic technology. This includes funding research programs in the defense sector, academic institutions, and commercial startup businesses. In addition to the ARRW and Hawk programs, 
The United States Air Force presented a hypersonic development contract to a team comprised of members from Raytheon and Northrop Grumman in September last year. This project, also known as the Hypersonic Attack Cruise Missile, attempts to provide a missile system that is air-breathing and propelled by scramjets. The United States Air Force is contributing to broad research on hypersonic engines in addition to financing specific weapons programs. Reaction Engines, headquartered in the United Kingdom, Stratolaunch, based in California, and Hermes, situated in Atlanta, Georgia, have all received money from the military and its research wings to do the necessary research. Further, the United States Department of Defense has signed a contract with the manufacturer Lados, located in Virginia, for the production of a bigger class of air-breathing hypersonic system capable of conducting several missions. The contract is worth $334 million. This system, which the Department of Defense refers to as Mayhem, will have the capacity to carry several sensors and weapon payloads, and its delivery is slated to take place in the year 2028. In addition, there are rumors that China also has this technology. However, it is not as effective as it might be since China has copied so much from the United States. The Washington Post has already reported that hypersonic missile technology developed by U.S. defense companies, including computer-aided engineering software and pieces of hardware such as interferometers, had been sold through intermediary firms to Chinese military research groups working on hypersonic capabilities, such as the Chinese Academy of Aerospace Aerodynamics. According to a Chinese researcher working on hypersonic technology who spoke with the newspaper anonymously, American technology is better in this particular instance. Certain tasks are impossible for us to do without access to foreign technology. Anyhow, the United States has made it a top priority to develop a defense infrastructure that is capable of intercepting and neutralizing hypersonic missiles fired by Russia and China. Anti-hypersonic missiles, also known as the Glide Phase Interceptor, and for which a prototype is now being developed by Raytheon and Northrop, are going to be part of this defense system, along with satellites that will be used for a missile monitoring and warning system. The Space Development Agency intended to conduct the first launch of approximately 6-8 to Tranche Zero missile tracking and transport satellites in low Earth orbit in September. However, Delays in the supply chain and protests over contracts caused a delay that will not be resolved until at least the middle of December. In this sense, 20 communications satellites will be provided by Lockheed Martin and York Space, while 8 missile tracking infrared sensor satellites will be provided by SpaceX and L3 Harris. Together, they will make up the 28 satellites that will make up Tranche Zero. It is anticipated that the second launch of satellites for this batch will take place in the month of March. Beginning in April 2025, L3 Harris and Northrop will begin launching the 28 Tranche 1 infrared sensing satellites in groups of seven at a time. These satellites are now in the process of being developed. The hypersonic and ballistic tracking space sensor is simultaneously being developed by the Missile Defense Agency and will be comprised of satellites in low Earth orbit with medium field of view sensors to track missiles and produce the data necessary for targeting. These satellites will be placed in orbit around the Earth. An all-encompassing, always-on satellite system for early warning and tracking of missiles, including hypersonic weapons, is currently being developed under the auspices of both SDA and the Missile Defense Agency. This system will eventually come together to form the overarching, persistent overhead satellite system capable of telling any incoming missile system to F off. And with that, today's video has come to an end. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Feel free to share your thoughts about the new advanced weapon system in the comment section. Also, if you want us to make a video on certain aircraft or warships, let us know. Moreover, if you are new and haven't subscribed to the channel yet, remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you won't miss any useful and informative daily videos. Thank you for watching, and best of luck!